Today, we're going to be talking about revising your offer. Hey, what's going on, people? We're at day number three of Digital Introductions. We are dealing with the offer, which is the most important thing, because it's like trigonometry, algebra, calculus. If your early equations are wrong, I don't care how hard you work. I don't care how much stuff you put into it. It's not going to pan out in your favor. This is probably the most important part of your offer. And the first thing is, you know, as we talked about in day one and day two, you have to have an offer, you have to create the offer, and then you have to put it out. If you do not put your offer out with vigor, you're gonna have problems here. You're gonna have a lot of problems. I'm gonna use one example. Yes, domain names can be very, very intriguing. I'm looking for a few right now. Then there's what I call squatters, people who get your domain name or the name you want and don't really do anything with it. It drives me crazy. I'm going to take you through the methodology of revising your offer. The first step is you have to create it. The second step is you have to put it out more than once, more than twice, more than three times, more than four times, more than five times. You want to have like 30 data points. Now, many people, once they run out of family and friends and all those other folks, uh, it starts to get a little hard. And that's when you gotta start talking to those people that scare you called strangers. But you want 30 to 100 data points, and this is why. When you're putting out your offer, you're gonna note trends if you put your offer out enough. Let's say you, you wanna sell this iPhone case, right? You put it out 10 times and one person likes it. Your number is, you're gonna get a conversion one time out of 10, but many people are thinking that's failure. Now, if you put it out 30 times, and then all of a sudden you get six conversions, your conversion methods change. You have to put it out. You have to put yourself out there. You have to talk about it. Because if you create an offer and don't put it out enough, it's gonna be very hard for you to make quality revisions because you don't have a sample size big enough to do anything with. Now, how do you do that? And this is, goes back to doing some stuff you wanna do because let's say you get into the weight loss industry or you get into fitness industry and you're only getting into it because it makes money. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I'm telling you what you're facing. You get into that stuff and you don't know what the lay of the land, you don't know how much work you have to do and you're making all these offers, it's gonna get hard, it's gonna get boring and your interest level is gonna wane because you're not really into that stuff. Now, the next thing that you have to do is create a revision container. Let's say, you know, I mean, it could be as simple as, as I'm gonna move this stuff around. It could be as simple as this notebook, which has my headphones on it. Because you've got a way to, one, put out your offer, keep up with how many times you put your offer out with. And who did you put your offer out with? I was having a very interesting conversation on Facebook today, and it was just talking about uh, people. I, I didn't get a chance to get into it because I've been so busy. Years ago, and if you didn't know this, I was writing a relationship book. Halfway through, after interviewing over 200 women, I decided I did not want to do it. I felt that it was gonna pigeonhole me in a certain area and just like, once you get in there, it's real hard to get out. I abandoned the project, but how did I talk to these 200 women? It was the offer. This was the pitch, it was real simple. It's like, hi, my name's Glendon Cameron. I am writing a relationship book. I want your views on relationship. There is no good nor bad answer and no, I don't need your real name. Everyone talked to me. Why? The offer was, I can be honest, and he's not gonna know who I am. But most folks told me their name and they, they wanted to talk. Now, this is something else that I found out and this, this really works into this conversation. I had women unsolicited tell me they got married to a dude they did not love. And this was the thing, and this goes into offers. He was a good provider, he was a good person. I wanted kids, why not him? So. His offer was, I'm a good dude, and a lot of women, even though they didn't love this guy, now later down the road they got a little janky because here's the problem with that. If they're going on his offer versus the you know, love, real deep love and commitment, then someone who comes along with a better offer 
bye bye. But it was amazed. It was a real simple offer. I would do it anywhere. And since I was really trying to write this book, I would go to a table of women. I was in this uh, place called Vino Libra. And there was like four women at a table. And I said, hey, why not them? And I went over there and I did my whole pitch. Next thing I'm sitting down and we start talking. I get their viewpoints. I'm writing stuff down. And we're still friends to the day. And this was like 2009. A powerful offer opens up doors. Now, I did not have to revise. We were talking about revising the offer. Now, where the stream cut off with YouTube was on the part about when I was an author, well, still an author, when I was out doing my thing with my first book, which I abandoned. And I was getting off into all of the offers that I made and how good an offer is. For me to go up to strangers every day, because I, I got real hyped about it because I learned some stuff. I would go up and it was just like, hey, my name's Glenn Cameron, I'm writing this relationship book. I want your opinion. There's no right or wrong answer. I don't even need your name. I just want you to talk to me for five minutes, right? That was the pitch. That was the offer. And I made it over and over again. And because it was such a good market, because the thing is, women tend to read relationship books like 99.5% of the time compared to guys. And it, it was really interesting, revising your offer. And essentially, you've got to have an offer to put out that you can get feedback on and revise. So let's stick with the interviewing of the 200 plus women. The offer was so good out the box, I didn't have to revise it because no one ever said no. But once again, it was a good topic. I was approaching people honestly. I mean, seriously, I was writing a book. It was no joke. I did get some pushback from this chick in the bar was like, what makes you qualified to write a book? Are you married? And I said, no but I do have a lot of experience. And she was just kind of, mm-hmm. And she still talked to me, even with all of that. But the offer, I mean, like I said, we're, we're gonna talk about the first whole week of digital introductions, cold calling for successful business owners, because here's the problem. I was telling this today to one of the guys at my gym. There's so many people out there who have wonderful courses, training, talents, whatever, but no one ever knows about them because there is no way for the world to know. There's no introduction. Chimaka Mom was introduced to all of us because it was funny, lighthearted, made us feel good, and it drove a lot of sales. That's what's called when someone discovers you. If you're starting a business, you got to force discoveries every day. You have to be in charge of the dis discoveries. Now, with revising your offer, because like I said, I'm going to talk about this several times is you need to put out 30 to 100 offers. Now, what is an offer? Your offer is your, your thumbnail on your, your YouTube channel. Your offer is your picture on your profile. I've got some janky pictures that I need to improve because those are things that get people into your pipeline. Then the next thing is knowing what your offer is and knowing what is a good response and what's a bad response. And you need what's called a container. You need a system. And as I said the other day, for many people, this will work in the beginning. Pen and paper, you don't have to get super complicated. You don't need all of these spreadsheets because you're not dealing with that many people in the beginning. So working on that, every time you put out an offer, if you get yes, okay, that you know it works, it converts. It's really not anything to do with that because every time you put out your offer and you get the result that you want, there isn't a lot of revision that has to happen. But if you're putting your offer out and you're consistently rejected, now you have to strip your offer apart. First thing is what's wrong with the offer? Is it the introduction of the offer? Is it the middle part of the offer? Or is it the end of the offer? Okay, let's go back with, hey, my name is Glendon Cameron. I am writing a book. That tells everything. I'm writing a book, my name, why am I approaching you? That tells, her, you know, that told them very quickly why I was coming over because when you walk over to somebody, they're like, why is this fool coming over to me? Then the second part, I want your opinion on relationships. There is no right or wrong answer and I don't need your name. So. This is what I'm doing. This is what I want from you. There is no harm to you. 
So you've got to break it. You know, there's actually like 10 parts to that offer and I'll get into that later. But those are the kind of things that you have to look at because if your introduction sucks, even if the second part and the third part is good, then you're screwed. Who here has a business that they're making offers every day? Because this is another thing. I had uh, matter of fact, I think I can read it without disturbing too many things. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you something. Well, I can't show you. you you'll, you'll get to see it. This will, I'm leaving this in the course too. Because one of the things that happens when you make a lot of offers, people will tell you to slow down. People will say, don't email people every day. Email them once a week or email them every two weeks or, oh, email them only when you have something super remarkable to give to them. Now, part of that is, a lot of that is erroneous. I can't show it to you, but I'm going to read it to you because this happened. One of the things that I'm doing every day, and I'm going to explain the psychology behind it, is I'm making love offerings on all of the live streams that are not here. And what a love offering is, if you love the content of this channel, and you should, leave an offering. It can be anything from five to $5,000, right? And I'll break that down in a minute. And he's been, you know, acting like a little bitch. So I don't know if he's going to lead us up here. And I'm going to read it to you because this is what's going to happen when you start making a lot of offers. People slow down, don't do too much, be cool. You're not ever going to get anywhere laying back, being cool and being passive. It's not going to happen. Hey GC, thanks for fixing the sound. But constantly holding a mic in one's hand does not look cool. An alternative solution would be swell. No offense. Now, this is free content that you can use to make money, and he's trying to be choosy. Then I hit him up with this. If you want to contribute some money to a solution, forge your love offering of $1,500. Thanks. Otherwise, continue to enjoy the free money-making content. Now, that was a cool, nice, level-headed response. Now, here we come with the troll stuff. Mr. Cam, asking for money from the public is beneath you. This is some of the stuff you're going to get when you start putting out a lot of offers. I thought you were rich, not broke. To be honest, I was indeed thinking about a love offering the other day, but I've postponed any action. Here is the part where I'm going back to the cranky hustler. Look, you are in no position to dictate how I get money because I have money does not mean I do not want more. Make your, <laughs> I love this stuff, really I do. Offering ASAP your demands, someone who is actually paying for this content. Now, I'm not gonna blast him, but part of the thing is there are many people out there who are psychologically predisposed to not making money. They have a problem with making money. They have all of these weird notions of how to make money because they don't make money. Let's see what we got here. Trolls are the biggest haters. Love them for the compliments and the motivation. Preparing for many trolls. Everything city. I'm expecting mine to welcome them. What's up, Rose? Uh, Mike Z, why do you reply? This is why I reply. Trolls are undercover fans. And what they do is they come back and then they bring more people. But what's happened is, and another reason I, I, I reply is, trolls will also attack positive fans. I've had people cussed out defending me. So that's another reason that I take ownership in the leadership position of handling them. And you know, sometimes the tribe jumps on them. This whole thing about revising your offer, and this is why so many people are not successful, and I really want you guys to hear me. They never take their shots. If you, you know, going back to dating, when you meet someone you like, you make several offers. Hang out, let's go to dinner, let's catch a movie, let's go to, those are offers that you make to that one person to increase the time that you spend together. But many people don't call those offers or overtures. Same thing, the more offers and overtures you make in getting money, the more money you will make. Like I, I'll explain with email. I have a lot of people who got pissed off when I was doing a lot of emails. But my, when I quadrupled my emailing, 
my money four times, five times. Sure, I lost a lot of people, but here's the thing. If someone is gonna lose it because you sent them three or four or five emails in a week, really think about the mindset of that person building a business. If an email can make them flip out, this person is not situated or built to run a business because let me tell you, there's a lot more than that that's coming. You want to make as many offers as possible so you can get as much feedback as possible because from day one, you're going to find out if your stuff's converting. If it's not converting, you have the feedback and the tools to fix that. But let's go with Brian Flowers. Guy was stationed with at Schofield Barracks, 25th Infantry Division, uh, Hawaii. Brian was from New York. He was an average looking dude. You know, he wasn't like, super, he wasn't ugly or anything like that, but he wasn't like super um, handsome. But Brian would go to the Paradise Club, and that was a club on base that would get packed when the island deployed. All the wives and every, I mean, it's just like the club population would quadruple when the island went on deployment. Brian would go in there, and this was his offer. Hey, how you doing? Want to fuck? Seriously, that was his offer. Now, you're hearing that, and you're going, that's crass, right? No one ever said yes, right? Mm-mm. Brian never, I used to watch him. He never got it. The worst night he had, he went to five different women. And he told me later, he said, I moved too quick. Brian lost four because he said he moved too quick. Because number three saw him, and number four saw him talking to three. All right. And then the next thing, I went to Schofield. Not, I left Schofield Barracks, went to Fort McPherson, East Point, Georgia, and Tyler, Tyler Perry bought that, right? That's funny. The knowledge was too heavy for us. Okay, Tracy Smith. Tracy looked like a slee stack, right? Uh, slim guy, he you know could dance really well, and Tracy would just be like saying stuff to chicks like this. He made more offers than Brian Flowers. Tracy would be like, "I'm gonna fuck you one day." Oh, you know you want me. You. And he would do that stuff, and he would do it over and over. And he would just wear chicks down because he would like be like a predator. He would set his sights on a chick, and he would go, go, go. And I remember one, you know, we just sit around on Saturdays. Saturdays was the day that we would. Uh, wash our cars and get ready to go out on Saturday night. And he would just be telling you, he's like, you know, I know they don't like me, but if I asked him to fuck 30 times, he said 90% do. Just putting it out there. And, you know, I was young and just appalled because I was brought up that's, that's just not how you talk to a woman. So I had two examples of stuff that worked. Neither one of them got slapped. I'm going to even tell you a dirty story. It's, it's, it's dirty because my boy got dirty done dirty. Uh, my boy Rob, his girl, I can't even remember her name, but I went to see Tracy and his girl had these beautiful legs. I mean, just, you knew, I saw the legs, the door was open because Tracy had his foot against the door, right? And I saw the legs and I was like, what are you doing in Kim? That was her name. What are you doing in Tracy's room? You don't go in Tracy's room and take your shoes off unless you're comfortable. And if you're comfortable, Tracy didn't have his shirt on. Tracy had some shorts, shorts on, no shoes, easy access. So I go back to my boy, Rob, and I said, Rob, you know, you may hate me, but I saw Kim in Tracy's room and we all know what Tracy does. I'm just letting you know. And I think you should ask her if she was hanging out with Tracy and see what she says. So my boy Rob's like, dap, dap, appreciate you. And in front of me, he asked her and she says, no, I wasn't hanging out with Tracy. Tracy put out, he was fucking the shit out of her. Rob broke up with her. Then I became the bad guy. That was my dude. Rob is my dude. And when I see my dude or my chick or getting done dirty, I'm going to say something. And a lot of people are like, hey, just leave it alone. He broke up with her. We remained friends. She hated me. But also, Tracy was fucking everything under the sun. There was another concern. <laughs> it was a big ass concern. So... That was the thing. And Kim ended up getting pregnant by some other dude and it just turned out ugly. All right, back to offers. You know, those were two examples and I'm gonna leave those in there. There are two offers. These guys consistently made offers. Now, I did some research on this and I've even talked about it on some of the streams. The average guy does not make that many offers for women and they're, I mean, in a year, these guys both were making more offers per week than the average guy does in a year. The same principle applies to sales. 
The more offers you make, even if you're bad, even if you're ugly, even if you look like a slea stack, if you continue to make some offers, I'm just gonna admit it, I'm proud. Hey, Tracy was bringing in some 10s and 15s simply because he would go up, hey, I know you want me, over and over and over again. And if you as a business person put your product or service out there over and over again, you will make money. Uh, Reginald Tanner, say you want to tell someone there's something wrong with their website. Most common, it's ugly as fuck. What's a softer way of making a suggestion that can help them without offending them? Um, look, bro, look, chick, your website's not going to make you any money. You need to make adjustments. So that's dirty macking. <laughs> Uh, Purpose Pit, how do you know when a product is a dud versus a good product but poor sales skills? This comes into the offer part. All right, let's say you're selling this battery. You know, physical object doesn't take a lot of trust for you to sell, right? And you put it out there and no one's buying it. But you're putting it out there for $10. But you go to the dollar store and the same battery, which came from Family Dollar, I don't know if y'all can see that, is going for $2 for a pack of three. So I'll give you a better example of that. Craigslist, I had this beautiful bedroom set, I got a storage unit, brand new, not heard enough, it's still in the boxes, right? So I just put this imaginary price in $950. Well, brand new in the stores, it was going for 750. So why are you gonna come to my dirty warehouse and pay 950 for a bedroom set that you can get from a store, have more trust, more faith. So once I lowered it down to 500, it flew out. So pricing is a big part, and that's something you can find by just playing with it. You can raise the price, lower the price, and see at what point it flies out. Um, there's just so many ways to revise your offer, but offers are very, very important. And uh, Ruski, okay, gee, so I'm starting out as a web developer, very much a novice. If I focus on asking instead of learning my craft as much as I would have been better, yes. Now I know that's gonna sound very contrary because you're, you're hearing learn your craft, right? What's gonna make you learn your craft more than you sitting around playing with websites that don't make you any money? You get a client, and I, this, this, is a good, this is a good offer. Rent-A-Crate. I lied about my credentials for Rent-A-Crate. I went on monsters.com and I found jobs I knew I can do but I had no experience and I created my own reference. I was up in really great 10, 12 hours a day because I had to learn that job because it was getting paid. So if you go out and pitch someone something, you're going to learn faster and you're going to be more driven than just creating something that's just to create something that makes no money. Yeah, we're going to get in that later. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is stay very focused because the only course that I'm focusing on is digital introductions and the offer section is going to probably take a week or two because there's so many nuances in there that no one is telling you. It's just like, hustle, grind, right? It's more complicated than that. I had to learn how to do stuff. I bought books on cold calling and I got really good in three months. But the pressure was like, if I don't do this job, they're gonna fire me, that's just real. I'm gonna have a rich self-published author, a lot of training about writing. It's just, I'm gonna be real focused on B School for Hustlers. Because essentially the way that the course is going is the offer and pitching and selling because the next thing is going to be about selling. But before you get into selling, you must get attention. You can't sell anybody anything until you get attention, right? So what this section is, digital introductions, will teach you how to make offers, how to get people to respond to you, email, DM. But once again, your offer makes it so much easier because this is what happens. People get segmented training. You become really good at doing email, but you don't know, you don't really know how to create good offers. You can become a ninja at making offers and everything else can be shitty and you will make more money than someone who is a ninja at all the other stuff. That's just how important offers are. Uh, Ganji, I like this video. It sounds similar to the offer section when doing copywriting. The offer is everything. It is everything. You could do everything else wrong, but the offer be good and you will make money because this is why it's so important. You go out and you, you know, I, I go ahead and can put something together about DM, right? The DMs, emails, and pitching people. That's not gonna take that long. But if your offer is not legit, if it's not correct, if it's not powerful, none of that other stuff's gonna work. And that's what a lot of people don't tell you. Cause you know, someone can send you a great uh, Instagram course and how to manipulate and talk to influencers. But if you know how to make offers, 
across the board in your personal life and your business life, you're just going to be winning, like really winning, not getting tired of winning, but actually winning and enjoying it.